I do have some mixed feelings on Alex Ramosi, but I will say this about him. He's not afraid to put himself out there, and he definitely seems willing to grind very hard. Something you've shared before that I, I thought was very interesting is just the differences between how the most successful people view time and their approach to time horizon. If you could elaborate on that. You can, you can pretty easily tell how successful an entrepreneur is by looking at two elements of time. One is the increments of time they speak in. So if they talk in decades, they talk in multiple decades, they talk in lifetimes, they talk in generations, I can almost guarantee you it's gonna be a significantly more successful entrepreneur than the one he talks about next week, next month, and even next quarter. And it's such a small thing, but it's it's pervasive. Like you can hear it in conversation, you can immediately know, oh, this guy's only doing this much. Because the only way to do really big things is to think on a much longer time horizon. Okay, I generally like that. You are more in control of where you're going to be in 10 years than in 10 days. The second component is how they manage the micro, which is if you look at someone's calendar and how they allocate their most scarce resource, which is time, you can see where they're going to be in six or 12 months. So if you look at the calendar as the balance sheet of someone's time asset and how they allocate their, their time budget, then you will see where they're going to get their returns. And so if we look at a founder and we look at their calendar, we can tell how the company's going. We can usually see how we need to fix it because fundamentally most entrepreneurs work all the hours of the day. Most, most of them do, right? As an entrepreneur, yes, I get asked often, wow, Blake, I can't believe you're taking a call this hour, to which I respond with, well, the sun never sets on the offshore industry. That being said, I don't have a heavily blocked out calendar. My business moves very quickly. For the next two or three days, I've got quite a few scheduled calls. After that, my calendar is pretty open, and I like that because it gives me the flexibility to jump on big opportunities as they come up. And so if they're not making the amount of money that they want to make, it's because they're doing the wrong stuff. And that's usually the biggest issue. And they think they need to work harder, but they've already maxed out their hours, which means fundamentally they're they're wrong. They're seeing a distorted reality. They think this is going to work and it is not. Are there particular things that, that you see? I mean, just even, even looking like at an entrepreneur's calendar. And I will agree with Alex on that. The reason most people are not as successful as they could be is because they're not properly allocating their time. Where you're like, okay, with well that, uh, you can tell right away, okay, this is not optimized or the focus isn't in the right place. Like what, what type of things stick out? Well, the single common trait that every entrepreneur has to get over over time is relinquishing control. So, Big issue with a lot of people. It is important that you are able to relinquish control. However, it is vital that you relinquish control to the right people. I've talked about this in other videos. Be slow to hire, be quick to fire, but hire and fire when appropriate. Continual giving up of control at all levels. And so whatever they're doing is usually the thing that they need to be able to give up and transfer to somebody else in order to get further and further above the business and get more leverage. And There's a difference between working in your business and working on your business. And a beauty of being an entrepreneur is that anything that you suck at, you should hire someone else to do. Anything that you're good at, you should lean into. However, there still comes a time to delegate just about any task. So in the beginning, you have to give up delivery or you have to give up selling or you have to give up promoting you have to give up something or administrative tasks and you look at your calendar and you say which of these things is most easy to replace in the marketplace and is the cheapest one that i can replace and you replace the first one that gives you the most time for the least amount of money then you're like great now i should fill my time up with the thing that makes me more money Basically, what an entrepreneur's job is to do is to fix the bottleneck in the business. Let's say you run a painting business. First thing you need to do is figure out how to get customers. So you get a lot of customers, and then what will happen is you'll have a team that does the painting, but you don't have enough painters. They become overwhelmed. Then you need to focus on having more painters. All of a sudden, you have a lot of painters, not enough business coming in. You then focus on getting the business to come back in. There's lots of different bottlenecks in the business, and as the owner of the company, it's your job to go in, address the issue with the bottleneck of the business, get that flowing again, and then see where that causes a bottleneck somewhere else in the process and fix that point. And fundamentally, that is the game, is you just continue to trade up the time until you have bought all of your time back, um, and then you can just do all the highest level jack leverage activities, um, and leverage just being defined as getting more for what you put in. And that's the goal of every entrepreneur, to not work. Because once you don't have to work, you are free in terms of your time, and that opens you up to go on and do the things you enjoy doing and explore other opportunities.